When I hear the word WrestleMania, I am instantly reminded of all the classic manias from my childhood. Shows like WrestleMania 20 and 24, moments like Once in a Lifetime, and so much more. And I would bet that the peak of WrestleMania for a lot of you guys is between WrestleMania 17 and WrestleMania 30. But there is one mania that took place after those shows that is often regarded as one of the best of all time. WrestleMania 31 WrestleMania 31 is so fascinating to me because it's hard to find a WrestleMania that really captured the magic of what WrestleMania should be like more than this one. This show easily is a top 5 WrestleMania of all time, but the reason why it's so fascinating is nobody expected that. Back in 2015, the road to WrestleMania was very, very shaky. Mania season is usually a time of hype and excitement, a time where the product is supposed to be at its hottest and best, and that was definitely not the case going into this show. The company was changing and going into a new era, and it was finally hitting everyone. Our boy John Cena was now an upper mid carter and he was taking the back seat. It had been over a year and any hope of CM Punk coming back at that point was gone. The Undertaker's WrestleMania streak was now over. Something that was a genuine mini tradition was officially done. And we didn't even know if Taker was in any shape to wrestle anymore. I mean, it looked like the man literally died last year. Roman Reigns was going to be in the main event even though it felt like 80% of the audience was against it. Daniel Bryan who had just returned from injury was thrown back to the mid card. And just to make things even more confusing, the champion Brock Lesnar's contract was coming up and all signs pointed to him returning to the UFC. To say things were cooked would be an understatement. The product just fell off, the aura was gone, something was missing, whether it was a disaster of the 2015 rumble or then pushing Dolph Ziggler one night as the go and then forgetting about him the next night, the fans were just tired and Mania 31 was looking to be one of the most underwhelming manias of all time. Sting and Taker were finally on the same Wrestlemania card but they weren't versing each other. Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins we knew was going to be solid but it didn't move the needle. Cena instead of being in a big time match was up against Rusev and the main event was between a guy that everyone hated and someone who's probably leaving the company. And mind you, the main event of this show was built up with two idiots in the ring playing tug of war with the championship belt. Who thought this was a good idea? People wanted the rock wrestling, people wanted something special, they wanted Austin back, they wanted the shield triple threat, they wanted Angle back in the ring. People wanted a lot of things, just not what the company was giving them. So it wasn't exactly a surprise when we started getting articles like WrestleMania 31, how 12 months of mistakes have doomed the event from the start, top 10 reasons why WrestleMania 31 is gonna suck, 13 problems nobody wants to admit about WrestleMania 31. You would have thought we were getting some WCW 2000 booking. Roman Reigns' grandma on a forklift match or something. The fans were just not into it, and I understood it, something just felt missing. And a lot of it had to do with the fact that the main event was a match that a lot of people just didn't care for. But everything changed just a few days before the show, and it was all because of one simple announcement. Just days before WrestleMania live on ESPN, Brock Lesnar told the world that he wasn't going back to the UFC and that he re-signed with the WWE. Lesnar was staying, business was picking up, and just like that, the main event was interesting again. So now it was like, yo, hold up, is Roman really gonna beat the man who defeated the streak last year? Is Lesnar really gonna lose after this insane push? Will the company even be down with Roman losing? What the hell were they gonna do? Instantly, Manny got more hype. Quote, in 45 seconds and not even on WWE programming, this single announcement did more to get me excited for Mania play button than the last two months of actual programming. Quote, let's go! Yeah, I want him to retain. OMG, Seth could cash in on Brock and that would be the coolest storyline ever. I'm marking out. Oh, wrestling fans. But regardless, after everything, the fans were now excited. So, it was March 29, 2015, it was WrestleMania 31. After months of a quote unquote horrible build, after matches being booked that we didn't really want, the show was here and it was time. And the first thing that I remember was just being in awe how beautiful the setup was and how the stadium looked. The sun was shining, the stage was huge, the crowd was rowdy, and as soon as the show started, just like every other WrestleMania there's ever been, no matter what the card looks like, no matter what the build is, in that moment when you see the crowd and you see the stadium, you feel like a kid again. The WWE could book the worst WrestleMania ever. The main event could be Goldberg versus three homeless guys for the world title. But yo, when that show starts and the pyro is hitting and the stadium is shown and all the fans are going crazy, you're gonna be excited. And the first match was a seven man ladder match for the IC title. A ladder match was opening up WrestleMania once again and life just felt good. This was easily the best choice to open the show. Seven men going out there and going crazy cause the rent was due and moments needed to be made. And the best part was seeing Brian one year removed from his main event moment still loved by the the crowd still doing his thing. Now, should he have been in a ladder match knowing how his neck was? Uh, definitely not. 
but he was and it was a treat to see. We had future WrestleMania main event of Stardust doing his thing, rest in peace to Luke Harper, and we got some crazy spots, including a power bomb to the outside of the ring through a ladder, a suplex off the top of a ladder, a zigzag off the top of a ladder. Cause yeah, who needs their back, right? Whatever, it's fine. I'll just get another one off AliExpress or something. The perfect way to open up a WrestleMania with Daniel Bryan and what would be his last pay-per-view match for three years walking out as IC champion as the crowd was going yes, yes, yes. One year later, still going crazy for him. It was a great moment. The second match of the night was Randy Orton vs Seth Rollins and there's one thing that everybody remembers from this match. Yeah, Randy Orton's elbow pads were pretty disturbing. The hell were you thinking? It was a legend killer in his 12th straight mania against the future, the man who was primed to be the next one up right along with Roman Reigns and he was Mr. Money in the Bank. Rollins at this point was on fire and to this day it's the best work of his career no doubt. His run in 2014 and 15 is something that was booked perfectly and he absolutely killed the role. But here, these two were second on the card in a match that the fans thought would be higher up, in a match that many thought would be match of the night. That's not what happened, but nobody was left disappointed. So they went crazy for 12 minutes. Yeah, just 12 minutes, just throwing everything out there. The match felt so fast paced, and when you have Randy Orton in the ring, that's not usually what you're expecting. But they were doing a sprint, and the fans, they loved it. JJ security got clapped, finishers were being hit, and the match reached a point where we thought the match was about to reach the next level. It had only been 12 minutes, and most fans going in expected a pretty long match with Rollins getting the win. So after everything, Rollins was in the corner and he was setting up the curb stomp. Randy was slowly getting up, and realistically, there were two outcomes. Either he hits it, or Randy moves out of the way and then hits his RKO. Uh, Seth Rollins didn't hit it, and Randy didn't move out of the way. Listen, this is no doubt, in my opinion, the greatest RKO of all time. We have seen so many legendary ones, but it doesn't get better than this. I, I don't care what you think. This is the greatest RKO of all time. Just look at this. How is that even possible? How do they think of this? In real time, watching to this day, it doesn't seem real. And when it happened live, you bet your ass I was jumping around my living room going crazy. It looked like something that if you did with your action figures, you'd still be like, nah, that, that's impossible. Seth Rollins was so high up in the air, he probably saw RVD up there. Truly out of nowhere. A finish so good that the whole stadium was jumping. A finish so good that it didn't matter what they did for the entire match before it. What an RKO, what a moment. Randy clutched it and Seth, poor Seth, was out like a light. And as Sting and Triple H were getting ready backstage for their entrances, Seth Rollins was walking back as the icon Sting was about to wrestle in his one and only WrestleMania match of his legendary career as Triple H was about to make a Terminator entrance and rise with the machines. Backstage, things got put into motion that would change everything. Just two hours before the main event and the show was going off the air, they officially put into motion one of the craziest endings of all time, and it involved a guy who we just saw get clapped. The show went on and it was a perfect example of just pure fun. Triple H and Sting had their match and to this day, yeah, just like everyone else, I still wish Sting had won the match, but this match was just pure buffoonery and that's why it's awesome. The spectacle of the entrances, Sting getting his moment, and, and yo, listen. Yo, they were out here doing fan service cameos and multiverses way before the MCU. Just how stupid this match was, was hilarious. You had old men who could barely walk making the save. I'm surprised nobody tore anything. Shawn Michaels looking like he was about to go hunting, but had to stop by, you know, to do a super kick. The NWO, who were the main ops first thing in the 90s, were the ones saving him for some reason. And old Triple H needed a sledgehammer to beat Sting. It made no sense whatsoever, but I can't lie to you and pretend that I hated this back in the day. I know it sounds like I'm roasting this match, but I can tell you, I, I love this match, and Mania needs dumb stuff like this. AJ Lee ended up wrestling her last pay-per-view match of her career on the show and announced her retirement two days later, a woman who carried the division for years and is someone who is still missed to this day. Cena and Rusev before the show didn't feel too big, it, it was whatever, but it felt real big, shout out to Manny Fresh, once Rusev pulled up in a tank at WrestleMania. A man pulled up to WrestleMania in a tank waving the Russian flag with Lana by his side. It doesn't get more fire than that. Cena goes out there and it's 2015, so you already know what that means. Cena is trying to prove to the world that he can wrestle. So what does he do? He pulls out a springboard stunner for some reason. The simulation was glitched. Never in my life did I ever think I would see Cena doing springboard stunners and tornado DDTs, but 2015 was a special time to be a Cena fan when he went crazy in the ring, and this was the first match where I was like, damn, he's definitely trying something new. So even though Cena wasn't in a big match as we hoped for, he definitely put in work on this night. 
And as you can tell, this show was just special. A ladder match, Randy and Seth with a crazy finish, Sting and Triple H with all their clownery, Rusev in a tank, Cena wrestling at Mania Lakes at an indie show, just everything was hitting. There was no point at this show where it was like, oh, this show sucks, when is the next match, when is the show ending? The atmosphere and the mood was just good. It was one of those nights where you remembered why you love this business, from the entrances to the pyro to the crowd going crazy to the moments. This show captured what WrestleMania is all about in the best way after one of the worst builds they've ever had for a Mania. Everyone thought this would be underwhelming, but they ended up dropping one of the best representations of WrestleMania. We even had a segment where Triple H and Steph got interrupted by The Rock after they announced the attendance. The Rock came out, the crowd went crazy, he did his thing and went face to face with Triple H. Some things never change. And just to make things even more rowdy, Steph would slap The Rock, who would leave the ring because he didn't want to hit a woman, and he would find and bring out prime Ronda Rousey to step up to Steph. It's hard to explain to people who don't remember or were too young how popular Ronda Rousey was back in 2015. She was on top of the world and one of the biggest four stars in the world. She was undefeated, she was a UFC champion, she was about to be in Fast and Furious 7, she was everywhere. And to have The Rock and Ronda in the ring stepping up to the authority, it was a huge moment. On a night that had a lot of newsworthy moments, this was a moment for the mainstream. This is what ESPN was talking about. This was what the world was talking about. This was supposed to set up for the next year in Dallas in front of the largest WrestleMania crowd of all time, Steph and Triple H versus Ronda and The Rock, which as we know, didn't end up happening. In the co-main, it was Bray Wyatt, rest in peace, taking on The Undertaker. And as the sun was setting in the stadium and setup somehow began to look even better, when The Undertaker came out, it, it was a moment. After the streak was broken the year before in a match where Undertaker looked lost and looked very, very old, many questioned if he would ever come back. What kind of condition would he be in? And a lot of people honestly didn't want him to come back. During the build to this match, you guys might not remember this, but the Undertaker never appeared on an episode. So when he came out and the darkness was coming in and Taker was back once again making that long walk to the ring, it was such a nice feeling knowing that the OG was alive as much as he could be. When he took the hat off and he had that short hair and he looked good, it was great and the match itself was just fun. Seeing The Undertaker back in the ring doing his thing, that was enough for us. Was it a WrestleMania classic for Taker like we were used to for so many years? No, not, not at all. But after the year before, we were just happy he was able to have a decent match. In a time where the product wasn't the best, in a time where we thought Taker was washed, the streak was over, Cena's run on top was done, this and that, in a time where things were just blah, the company held it down. And before we knew it, it was time for the main event. Everything on the show was awesome, everything was perfect, and the only thing left was the main event. And the assignment for Brock and Roman was to simply just have a good match, something decent, because that alone would cement this WrestleMania as legendary. That's all we wanted, that's all we were asking for, that's all we needed. They proceeded to drop a top 5 Mania main event of all time. You had Roman Reigns make his entrance that was so fire that even me as a Roman Reigns hater, I was in awe. You had Rock Lesnar pull up looking like he's about to catch a body. And I don't know if it was the suplexes, I don't know if it was the blood, I don't know if it was Brock taking his gloves off and destroying Roman. I don't know if it was Roman putting on the performance of a lifetime, I don't know if it was the crowd. Or if it was us watching at home, praying and hoping that Roman would lose, whatever it was, they tore the house down. They took something that nobody wanted as the main event and they made it legendary. They tried to top this two more times at Mania and could never even come close to it. I don't know what drugs they did back in 2015 or what was in the air, but they understood the assignment and they went above and beyond. It was one of those moments where the wrestlers just won over everybody watching, where even the skeptics had to just shut up and enjoy. This went from, oh this is going to be the worst main event ever, to oh my god, this might be one of the best main events ever. And the best part was, they did all of that, right? They made this a legendary match, a worthy WrestleMania main event. They made this match epic before this happened. And once Rollins music hit, it, it was a wrap, okay? Not just the main event, but this mania was cemented in top 5 all time territory. Just when you thought things couldn't get crazier, things couldn't get better, things couldn't get more wilder, they did this. They decided to have a cash in during the main event of WrestleMania. The boldest thing they could have done, the wildest thing they could have done. Rollins goes out there and after getting put on a poster earlier in the show, runs in there and wins the WWE Championship. WrestleMania 31 goes off the air with Rollins standing at the stage with the pyro going off and us getting the greatest ending of all time for any wrestling show. As time has gone on, we've kind of gotten used to this moment, you know, oh yeah, the heist of the century, it happened, yeah, but sometimes you gotta take a step back and remember how insane this was at the time. Roman Reigns was supposed to walk out of WrestleMania as the champion. That's what he was told, that was the plan. He flew in his entire family, and you know that's a big Samoan family, and everyone was there to watch the coronation of Roman Reigns, including his father, his uncles, and whatnot. But during this show, after Rollins' match with Randy, Rollins was told that the cash-in was going down to close this show, and with less than 10 people knowing about it, including Triple H, Heyman, and such, 
nothing leaked and nothing got out and the most fantasy booked idea of all time probably that everyone thought would never happen actually happened. The heights of the century is what they called it and the visual of Rollins on a stage holding the title, Pyro going off, is something that will forever be iconic. The boldest decision they could have made and they did it. Imagine the reaction of 50 Samoans watching the main event of WrestleMania, you know, they're excited, they're having a great time, they're about to see their boy win the main event and become champion, and then Seth Rollins just strolls out there and breaks their heart. What an ending and what a WrestleMania. The main event ends up being a top 5 WrestleMania main event of all time, the show ends up being a top 5 WrestleMania of all time, it's like damn, nobody, nobody expected this, nobody saw this coming. What an ending and what a WrestleMania. Is this the greatest WrestleMania of all time? I don't know. For some people, yeah. For me, I wouldn't go that far. But this is easily the most fascinating mania for me. From the company in early 2015 being in a creative rut with ratings going down, fan backlash every single week, pay-per-views that were flopping, the big stars were getting older, storylines were not hitting, the uncertainty of their future, they did this and they went all out. We got top to bottom class, moments and memories that were made that will live forever, feel good moments, epic entrances, not a dull moment on a 4 hour show, and the boldest ending and decision they could have made. Just fascinating. Dave Meltzer described the event as one of the best shows he had ever seen and said several great matches, a killer angle, and very little that wasn't good. He stated that WrestleMania 31 was one of the more balanced WrestleManias in history because it was not a bad match. Nobody, and I mean nobody, expected this to be as good as it ended up being, and to this day I still think it's the best Wrestlemania of the last 10 years or so. Somehow, someway, all the stars aligned and everything worked out. Something was just in the air that night. And this show will always hold a special place in my heart. This mania meant a lot to little grade 11 me, you know, still in high school, still trying to figure out what I wanted to do, and I ended up making my first ever wrestling YouTube video back in the day after this show. Something that got like 10 views and nobody has ever seen and nobody watching this has ever seen, but in a way this mania is low key responsible for me becoming a content creator, for me wanting to make wrestling content. That itself makes me love this mania, but no, it's more than that. I love this mania because it brings back nothing but good memories. I know for a lot of people watching this video, this show means a lot to you guys as well. So down in the comments, let me know. Why does this WrestleMania mean a lot to you? What memories do you have of this show? Let me know below. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay safe out there. I'll see you guys very soon with the next one. Until then though, take it easy, okay? Later guys.